Hello and welcome to Fan Park News. It's been an amazing 24 hours in the footballing world. Some interesting results to go through with you. But one big debate that's starting to rear its head is Player of the Year. Will it be Mohamed Salah? Could it be Kevin De Bruyne? Some people are still sticking out with Harry Kane winning it. I think maybe the person who's part of the, who's part of the team that achieves the most this year, whether it's winning the Premier League, Champions League, maybe a cup, maybe a cup double. The player within that squad may have a massive opportunity of winning it. But Jose Mourinho spoke yesterday about the media and its lies, uh, twisting of the truth, and they can't even negotiate between who's been a better player between Kevin De Bruyne and Mo Salah without dragging Man United and Jose Mourinho into the fray. The headline in the Daily Mail says Mourinho sold both of them for just 34 million and now they're lighting up the Premier League. Well, we all know just by the situation that is going on at Chelsea surrounding Conte that Chelsea managers do not control the comings and goings of players, whether it's academy players going out on loan, who is coming in, how much they bid for players. We know that's dealt with upstairs. So why does the media persist? on this narrative of attacking Jose Mourinho when discussing two players that are truly world class that are lighting up the Premier League, they have to make it a negative. Drives me, should drive all football fans insane that they can't just have a normal conversation. Sticking with results, it was an interesting FA Cup day. Swansea held to a nil-nil draw. Um, Man United, of course, scoring the two goals to get themselves through past Huddersfield. The ground where it from the media's point of view, all started to go wrong for Manchester United, where they fell into the relegation zone, where they haven't scored a goal since, where Paul Pogba's been nowhere to be seen, and Lukaku... That's not actually true, is it? United are second in the Champions League and FA Cup. Lukaku scored 21 goals this season, and it's Man United's best year in five... Oh, sorry, I, I'm getting confused by what the media tells us. But anyway, it was a great performance by Manchester United. VAR, though, within that game, reared its head. They rightfully disallowed the goal to its nth degree. Matter's knee was about, they anticipate, one inch offside. However, the definition of DAR when it was presented to the FA and to the Premier League was very much that it was to get right clear and obvious errors. It can't be clear and obvious if um, it's a mil like minuscule and it's being debated for hours and hours on end uh, as to whether it should be a mistake or not. On top of that, the when they made the original decision, the linings to work out whether the player was offside or not were not parallel with the pitch. So they guessed. It took eight minutes for those real parallel lines to be created to give an accurate decision. They gave it before that. They, they got it right, but that was more by luck than judgment. That's a worry surrounding VAR. Imagine if they make a decision on VAR that turns out to be wrong. Especially when the Lino gave the goal. Just a worrying sign for football overall. And could we really wait eight minutes for an accurate decision? Imagine waiting eight minutes for that decision. That's how long it took them to work it out accurately within the studio. On top of that... Um, other news come, Barcelona, of course, win away from home again. They're going to win La Liga, absolutely no doubt about that in any way, shape or form. Um, a player that's been linked with Barcelona, along with Manchester United and other clubs, has been young Ryan Sessegnon at Fulham, scored again today. This kid's a left-back, and he is just scoring, scoring, scoring. Two goals against Aston Villa, and... I would be surprised if Ryan Sessegnon was a Fulham player next year. If a big club, whether it be Barcelona, Real Madrid, Man United, Bayern Munich. I mean, I think, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, the young lad's English. I'd love him to go to a foreign club and be you know, at such a young age and go through the, the, the experiences of German or, or... He's already got an experience of English football. He understands the, the, the grit that's needed. But to go to another country where he can work more on his technique and be embedded into football in the right way, and that would be an amazing thing for me to see and witness. In terms of the FA Cup, though, we'll end it on the high note. Brilliant quarter-final draw. All of the big remaining teams have avoided each other. All the big remaining teams have avoided each other in those games, which means we are now set up. We are now going to be set up for a massive, massive round of semi-finals. Should... 
should all of those teams progress to the next round. It will be absolutely mess. All four teams remaining, Spurs, Chelsea, United and City, all avoided each other in the quarterfinals. And as I say, if they, some of those teams have still got to get through two rounds. They've got to get through the fifth round first. I think they will. What an amazing array of semi-finals the FA Cup could find itself with. But listen, make sure you subscribe to The Ultimate Football Fan. Thanks for watching Fan Park News, and I'll see you all again very soon.